So the next talk is entitled SMT attack, next generation attack, unobfuscated circuits with capabilities and performance beyond the SAD attacks. Uh, this is a joint work by uh, Kenya Zamari Azar, Adi Mardani Kamali, Uman Umayun, and Avesta Sassan, and Kenya will be giving the talk. Thank you for introducing me. Hello everybody, this presentation is about SMT attack next generation attack on obfuscated circuits with capabilities and performance beyond the SAT attack. At first, I'm gonna give you the introduction to hardware security, then the importance of logic locking technique in order to protect the IP. Then I'm gonna explain about the existing state of this art attack, which is the SAT attack. However, it has some limitations, which motivates us to uh, propose a more powerful attack based on satisfiability module theory, SMT in short attack. Then I go through the experimental results and conclude the paper. The increasing cost of RC manufacturing has pushed several stages of the manufacturing supply chain to the third party facilities which are considered as an untrusted foundries. Manufacturing in these untrusted foundries has raised many forms of security threats such as pollutionization, overproduction, intellectual property theft, etc. In order to protect IP from being reverse engineered or stolen, Researchers have studied various forms of logic locking technique in order to add ambiguity into the design by adding the key programmable gates. And by doing so, the adversary cannot retrieve the correct functionality of the circuit without having the correct value of the key. Shortly after introduction of logic locking technique, a new and powerful attack based on sati fully and satisfiability SAT attack was formulated. In the SAT attack, the adversary has access to the reverse engineered but locked netlist and functional and unlocked chip. SAT attack use, uh, follows the steps illustrated in this figure. It iteratively finds the inputs such that for that input and two different keys, the duplicated circuit produces two different outputs. This input is called discriminating input pattern dip. In general, SAT attack by using these dips iteratively eliminates the set of incorrect keys and find the correct key within a small time. And unlike brute force attack, the execution time of the SAT attack grows almost polynomially. After introduction of SAT attack in 2015, it was able to effectively break all previously proposed logic locking technique. However, after that, many logic locking have been proposed in order to defend against powerful SAT attack. But further research illustrates that they are vulnerable to other types of attacks such as removal attack, signal probability, SU attack, etc. In general, SAT attack has some limitations because it works perfectly fine when the logic obfuscation is of Boolean nature. That is because any Boolean log logic can be easily converted to its conjunctive normal form, CNF format, and be translated to the satisfiability assignment problem. So after 2017, attacker tried to trap the SAT solver by using behavioral logic of the circuit and controlled aspect of the circuit that cannot be translated to the CNF format. One example of behavioral logic of obfuscation could be delay and logic locking DLL, in which the researchers try to add the tunable delay key gates TDK into the design, which contains a conventional key gate and the tunable delay buffer. The capacitive load of the tunable delay buffer is controlled by the transmission gate. As you can see here, in the DLL obfuscation mechanism, the key not only controls the logical properties of the circuit, but also the delay properties of that. And whenever the key is not correct, it causes setup time and hold time violation to the circuit. Consider that timing is not translatable to CNF, so the SAT attack remains oblivious to the key used for timing obfuscation. But we do have a solution. In this paper, we have proposed a satisfiability modular theory attack, SMT in short, which its capability go far beyond that of SAT attack. SMT in, gener in general used to solve a decision problem. It has theory solver apart from the SAT solver. And it uses first order theories such as equality, reasoning, arithmetic, etc. Also, the SMT solver has this capability to combine different theory solvers together. And since it has theory solver apart from the SAT solver, it can support more powerful language as its input than the SAT solver. In general, there are two different approaches for solving an SMT problem, eager approach and lazy approach. In the eager approach, as you can see in this figure, 
The invocation of the theory solver and the SAT solver is serialized, and the theory solver works as a pre-processing step for the SAT solver to reduce the problem to the SAT problem. The merit of this approach is that the SAT solver can be used as is, but the demerit is that the SMT solver has to work a lot harder for solving a problem that is otherwise very obvious. For this reason, many SMT solver follows another approach, which is the lazy approach, in which the invocation of the theory solver and the SAT solver are in parallel, and they are simultaneously work together to solve a unified set of problem. Here you can see the overall view of our proposed SMT attack. As you can see here, the SMT attack could be invoked with any number and combinations of theory solver apart from the SAT solver. Each theory solver provides two capabilities. Theory propagation among different theory solvers and Klaus learning that the result of which is shared by the SAT solver. Before calling the SMT attack, few preliminary steps should be taken in order to make the obfuscated netlist translatable by the theory solver and the SAT solver. The first step is simply replacing the obfuscated gate with its equivalent key programmable gate KPGs. KPGs performs the same function as the obfuscated cells and it allows building a key controlled representation of the obfuscated netlist. Also, before uh, invoking the theory solver, the obfuscated netlist should be translated to what is understood by the theory solver. The translation step may be different for each theory solver used. After modern generation for each theory solvers and the SAT solver, the SMT attack is then formulated based on the current control flow of information exchange between the theory solver and the SAT solver. Invoking the SMT attack returns a satisfiable assignment, list of learned clauses and conflict clauses for SAT solver and theory solver respectively. In this paper, we have implemented four different variants of the SMT attack. In the first mode, in order to show that our SMT attack is the superset of SAT attack, we have reduced the SMT to the SAT attack. This is the algorithm of the SMT when it's reduced to the SAT attack. It should be noted that this algorithm is a one-to-one -one translation of a pure SAT attack. And only in line 13, apart from the learned clauses, we have also conflict clauses, which is done implicitly for the SMT that is a stateful solver. In the result, I will show you that any problem that is formulated for the SAT attack could be similarly formulated for the SMT attack. However, the SMT could further benefit from the usage of SMT to extend its capability to attack the obfuscation mechanism that cannot be attacked by the pure SAT attack. For this reason, we have implemented both eager and lazy approach of the SMT attack. As a case study, we chose delay and logic locking DLL technique. As I mentioned previously, in the DLL, the key not only controls the uh, logical properties of the circuit, but also the delay, proper, delay properties of that. Before calling the SMT attack, the obfuscated cells should be translated with its equivalent key programmable gate KPG. Also for attacking the DLL, we employ the graph theory solver. So the translation step is replacing the obfuscated netlist with its graph representation. It should be noted that each weight of each edge in the graph indicates the delay of that pass in the obfuscated netlist. As you can see here, key one and key three have no impact on the logical properties of the circuit and only change the delay. So the SAT attack results in a random assignment to key one and key three. However, the shortcoming of SAT attack is remedied in the SMT attack by means of graph theory solver. This is the algorithm for eager SMT attack. As I mentioned earlier, in the eager approach, the theory solver works as a preprocessor for the SAT solver to reduce the problem to the SAT problem. In order to constrain the th graph theory solver, we have to compute the setup time and hold time of the circuit. For doing so, we have used these two inequalities which uses the notation of this figure. It should be noted that after purchasing the functional chip from the market, we have clock period of that chip. Also, the end point and start point register of each timing pass are known. So by doing a spice simulation, we can calculate the setup time and hold time of the circuit. After constraining the graph theory solver, the theory solver calls the SMT solve function to find all combinations of key that don't violate the setup time and hold time of the circuit. 
but consider that only one of these keys is logically correct. So the theory solver translate everything to the CNF format and pass it to the SAT solver. In the next stage, the SAT solver attack the satisfiability problem augmented with these additional CNF clauses and make a new round of calls to the SNP solve function. However, there are some obfuscation mechanism in which the eager approach, which relies on reduction of a problem to the SAT problem is not applicable. So for this obfuscation mechanism, the lazy approach is the only solution for what? In which the invocation of the theory solver and the SAT solver are in parallel and they are simultaneously work together to solve a unified set of problem. This is the algorithm of the lazy SMP attack when attacking the DLL obfuscation technique. The big difference between the eager approach and the lazy approach is that in the lazy approach after model generation for the graph theory solver, the SMP solve function is not called. It only produces the learn clauses and conflict clauses and share it by the SAT solver. Then the SMP solve function is called to find all to find the assignment for the key values such that it can satisfy both theory constraint and the SAT constraint. It should be noted that since uh, in the lazy approach, the SAT model and the theory model share their literals and they are subjected to the unified set of problem, the decision tree and the search space for SMP solver is significantly reduced. Also by reformulating the lazy SMP attack which benefits from the bit vector theory solver, we could implement the accelerated lazy SMP attack which is a more efficient attack. As I mentioned previously, in the SAT attack, uh, the SAT attack by using discriminating input pattern iteratively uh, eliminates the set of incorrect keys and find the correct key within a small time. Each dip has different pruning capability. Depending on the pruning capability of dips, the complete set of dip could be different. The minimal complete set of dip is the smallest number of dips that could be obfuscate the circuit. In our lazy approach, we have proposed a mechanism to reduce the size of complete set of dips. And since in each iteration only one dip is found, the smaller number of dip results in a smaller number of iterations. It should be noted that in the SAT attack, only a single difference in the output, which is based on the applying the same input but two different keys, results in generation of a dip. However, in the SMP attack, we could use a stronger requirement for generation of a dip. This could be achieved by forcing the SMP solver to find dips with the highest possible Hamming distance in their propagated value to the primary output. And this is obvious that such a dip has a much higher pruning capability. Assessing dips based on the Hamming distance of the primary output is easily implementable in the SMP solver by using bit vector theory solver which allows us to perform integer arithmetic, orient, uh, arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. The Hamming distance of two, differ two different outputs could be obtained from this equality. The higher threshold of the Hamming distance is kept constant, which is equal to the number of output bits, but the lower threshold is defined as a variable, allows us to sweep the Hamming distance from the highest value to the lowest value, which is one. Also by reformulating the accelerated SMP attack, we could enable the approximate attack as well. Approximate attack is used to attack the compound obfuscation mechanism in which the sat hard obfuscation technique is combined with a high corruption obfuscation technique. sat hard obfuscation techniques such as anti-sat and sat lock have a very small output corrupt, uh, corruption and each dip can eliminate only one incorrect key in each iteration. So the number of iterations is exponential with respect to the number of key size. And that's why the original SAT results in a timeout. Uh, however, the objective of the approximate attack is to find the correct key value for the high corruption obfuscation technique without being trapped by the SAT hard obfuscation technique. In our accelerated lazy SMP attack, since we found deep that has highest possible Hamming distance, in their propagated value to the primary output, it biases the SMP to find key that are related to the high corruption of obfuscation technique in the early iteration. Then as a termination strategy, if the remaining keys are only for the sad part of obfuscation solution, SMP keeps finding weak dip with Hamming distance of one. 
So at this stage, we use a constraint on the number of allowed repetition when the humming distance is very small, and we can detect the trap and exit and report the approximate key. Here is the algorithm of our accelerated lazy SMT attack. As I mentioned previously, it benefits from the bit vector theory solver, which uh, is uh, constrained by the Hamming distance threshold. The lower threshold of the Hamming distance is uh, defined as a variable allows us to sweep the Hamming distance from the highest value to the lowest value, which is one. In the experimental results, at first, in order to show that our SMT attack is a superset of SAT attack, uh, we have obfuscated the ISCAS 85 benchmark using other level of obfuscation technique and IORTS obfuscation technique. This table shows the comparison between the number of iteration and execution time of the SMT attack when it's reduced to the SAT attack and that of the pure SAT attack when other level of obfuscation uh, is deployed with uh, different obfuscation overhead. This uh, figure shows the same comparison with when the IORTS obfuscation is deployed. As you can see here, in general, the SMT, when it's reduced to the SAT problem in terms of performance, behaves similar to that of the pure SAT attack. However, in order to show that our SMT attack's capability go far beyond that of SAT attack, we try to break the DLL obfuscation technique, which is not broken by the pure SAT attack. This is a result of the eager SMT uh, attack. As I mentioned previously, in the eager approach, the theory solver works as a preprocessor for the SAT solver. In order to reflect our experimental results, we also separate the execution time of the theory solver and that of the SAT solver. The execution time of the theory solver is the time that is needed to find all combinations of key that don't violate the timing properties of the circuit. However, only one of these keys is logically correct, which is found by the SAT solver. Also, this is the result of a lazy approach when attacking the DLL. Unlike eager approach, we cannot separate the execution time of the theory solver and the SAT solver since they are simultaneously work together. In the lazy approach, we saw that the number of iteration decreased significantly in comparison with the eager approach. However, the execution time of the, uh, each iteration in the lazy approach increased significantly, and that is because each dip in the lazy approach has to satisfy both theory constraint and the SAT constraint. Also, as I mentioned previously, in the accelerated lazy SMT attack, we found dips which have a higher pruning capability. In order to verify our claim, we profile the number of correct keys after each dip iteration. As you can see here, the key reduction rate in the accelerated lazy SMT attack is much higher than that of the pure SAT attack. And as a result, the number of iteration is reduced significantly with comparison with the pure SAT attack. In order to verify the approximate attack, we have obfuscated the benchmark using SATLA plus IOLTS. Calling SAT attack results in a time mode. However, our approximate attack can quickly find the correct keys for high corruption obfuscation technique, detects the trap, and exit and reports the approximate key. In our conclusion, at first uh, we introduced the SMT attack, which can benefit from different theory solvers. At first we showed that the SMT attack is a superset of SAT attack. And then by employing the eager approach and lazy approach, we could deobfuscate the DLL obfuscation technique, which cannot be broken by a pure SAT attack. Also, we have presented the accelerated SMT attack, which can provide a significant speed up compared to the pure SAT attack. Also, by reformulating the accelerated lazy SMT attack, we could enable the approximate attack to find an approximate key for a compound obfuscation scheme. Thank you. Any question for Kimia? No questions? Ah, yeah. uh, hi, I'm um, Tam Zidul from University of Florida. So uh, can you explain uh, your SAT attack results for circuits which are inherently more SAT resistant, like T628H? Uh, Actually, I cannot hear you. Can you please? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. OK. So do you have any result for uh, benchmarks like C6288? which are more resistant to set attacks? Uh, have you tried on those benchmarks? Uh, 
For example, benchmarks that are obfuscated with the SATLOCK obfuscation solution and anti-SAT obfuscation solution, which we call them SAT-hard obfuscation solution, are resistant against the SAT attack. Uh, and, but also with uh, employing our approximate SMP attack, we could break this obfuscation technique. And also you can see more uh, comparison between the SMP attack and the SAT attack in our paper. Hi, Kim here. This is Seetal. Uh, I'm a postdoc from NC State. Uh, thanks for your talk. I have a question on uh, your attack on delay locking. So what I understand is that uh, a tunable delay buffer has a two-bit key. That's, is that right? right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, you assume that the tunable delay buffer has a different delay for each key combination, right? Correct. Uh, but if you look at uh, uh, the activated chip uh, that you can get from the market, each chip has its own delay for the key combination. But in your formulation, you assume that the delay for each key combination is available already. But uh, you do not know upfront, right? You mean the process variation after production of a chip? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the process variation uh, changed the delay after the production. In the attack mode, we can uh, safely ignore the uh, process variation and try to attack the obfuscated circuits. However, if the design has uh, not considered enough margin for the process variation, the key that the SMP attack found maybe could not be obfuscate the circuit. Yes, so, so this attack is not useful in practice, right? Because you never get a chip that is exact uh, having actually, the exact delay actually, values as from the standard cell library. Yeah, right? actually, by uh, by nature, we uh, consider that uh, the designer uh, suppose uh, suppose enough margin for the process variation, and then we consider that margin. Yeah. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Okay, let's thanks Kimya again. <laughs>